your ears, we're going to go back to that ivory color or the off-white color, non-textured yarn. That's the color we're using for our ears. We are going to, again, continue with our rounds, making a circular shape. I'm going to use my row marker tail. If you want, you can use a smaller tail if you're using actual row markers. You can either start with the magic ring or the chain two method. I'm going to do the chain two method. One, two. Okay, so for the ears, round one, it says six single crochet inside the magic ring or six single crochets inside your first chain. One, two, three, four, five, six. Great. Now you're going to put your row marker in that sixth single crochet, or I'm going to take my row marker tail and pull it through my loop. Okay, just close round one. Round two says single crochet in each stitch around, okay? So we're gonna end round two with six single crochets. Putting one single crochet in each stitch. So one, six, great. Yarn over, pull through for me, or just move your row marker tail to that very last stitch. Okay, I'm gonna push my yarn down because everything's getting kind of stuffy. Okay, for round three, it says single crochet increase in each stitch around. That just means we're putting two single crochet in each stitch all the way around. We're gonna end round three with 12 single crochet. One, two, three, four, 11, 12. Okay, move your row marker to this last stitch right here, your 12th stitch. Okay, for round four, single crochet in the first stitch and then increase single crochet in the next stitch. So that's the repeating pattern for round four. One single crochet, then two single crochet. One, two, one, two. Repeat that pattern all the way around. For round four, you're going to end with 18 single crochets. Here we go. One, then one, Two, one, one, two. Great, okay, last stitch, move your row marker. I'm gonna pull my row marker tail through my loop. We are now finished with round four and ready for round five. Round five says single crochet in the first two stitches. So one, one, and then increase single crochet in the next. So one single crochet, one single crochet, two single crochet, and then repeat the pattern. One, one, two. All the way around for round five, you're gonna finish round five with 24 single crochet. One, 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 two. One, 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 two. One, 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 two. Twenty-three, twenty-four. Great, move your row marker, pulling through my row marker tail. For round six, seven, and eight, you're just single crocheting in each stitch around. You're gonna end each round with 24 single crochets. Okay, we just finished round eight. We are ready for round nine. Round nine says to single crochet in the first two stitches. So one, two, and then decrease single crochet. So for stitch three and stitch four, we're going to decrease those together, okay? Because the ear is not going to be stuffed with any polyfill, we do not have to worry about using a front loop only crochet, single crochet. We can do a normal single crochet. For round nine, we're going to single crochet one into the first stitch, single crochet one into the second stitch, and then for the third and fourth stitch, we're gonna go pull through stitch three, pull through stitch four, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Okay, let's do that again. One, one, and then decrease three and four. You will end round nine with 18 single crochets. One, 
one, decrease three and four. And 18, perfect. Okay, move our row marker stitch or our row marker tail. Round 10, so single crochet in the first stitch and then decrease your second and third stitch together. So one, and then stitch two and stitch three, yarn over, pull through. You will end round 10 with 12 single crochets. 12, great, moving row marker. Okay, for round 11, our last row of our ears, you're just going to single crochet in each stitch all the way around. You should end with 12 single crochets. One, 12, great. Okay, moving the row marker, I'm pulling through my row marker tail. We are now done with the ear. Grab your scissors. We're gonna cut a long tail so we can sew this ear onto the head of the llama. Okay, in the first stitch, I'm going to slip stitch. Just like that, yarn over, pull through my yarn, and that creates a slip knot. Perfect, I'm going to tie a knot between my two strings here. I'm gonna tuck my row marker tail on the inside of the ear, and there's ear number one. You'll flatten it, and then you'll fold it in half, and that's going to be your little ear. Okay, go ahead and make a second one of those. We want two ears, obviously, and then I will meet you for creating the neck of the llama. Okay, so yes, I just realized that in the pattern, if you were following along, the next step in the pattern was for the main torso or body of the llama. And what I was thinking for the next step is I was actually just following along with the head. We did the head, the ears, and my next logical step was the neck. So we're gonna go ahead and go to the next page of the notes, dive right into the neck. It's super fast, super simple, and then we'll do the main body of the llama, okay? We're going to use the pipsqueak yarn, or if you're not using the pipsqueak yarn, you're using the paint box bubblegum pink yarn along with us in the tutorial. That is great. I am going to start with a long tail. Why am I going to start with the long tail? Because this tail right here will help me sew the neck onto the head, and then I'm going to create the neck and then after I make the neck, I'm gonna leave a really long tail and that tail will help me sew the neck to the body part of the llama. Make sense? Just makes it a lot easier so you're not having to cut more yarn and reattach yarn. It's already there for you, ready to go. So leaving a long tail, I'm gonna say eight to 12 inch tail. Create your slip knot there, attach your crochet hook. Okay, in the pattern under the next section, it says to chain 21. One, two, three, 20, 21, great. Okay, it wants you to slip stitch into the very first chain to create that circle. In order to prevent myself from twisting my work and creating a difficult mess, I'm going to take my thumb and my finger and I'm gonna run them over the work and then I'm going to insert my crochet hook into that first chain right there and slip stitch to close that ring. Perfect. The neck is only seven rows. Each row only has one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. I'm going to chain one and single crochet into the same chain that we just slip stitched into just to establish round one. And you're just gonna put one single crochet in each stitch all the way around and keep going and I'll meet up with you when we get to the end of round one so that way I can show you how to continue working the neck. Okay, we are coming up on the very end of round one, kind of running our fingers over it so we know that it's all staying in line. There's no twisting at all. Okay, when we come up onto our very first single crochet, we're not going to slip stitch chain one. We're gonna work in continuous rounds, okay? So we're just going to single crochet right into the top of that first single crochet and go, okay? One single crochet in each stitch all the way around. If you want to use row markers, absolutely go for it, okay? You're gonna put your row marker in that very last stitch of your row. You can use this tail to kind of guide you to where that stitch would be and put your row marker right there, okay? I'm not gonna use a row marker. I'm just gonna allow this tail to guide me and I'm gonna use an approximation as I go up because we're only doing seven rows. It's not like we're doing 20, 30 rows and it's gonna be hard for me to decipher where that line was of when the row actually ended. Okay, so if you want, you can pull out your row markers and put your row marker right there in the very last stitch of round one. Otherwise, 
just dive right into round two and go. So for round two through round seven, you're just going to continue to put one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. And I will meet you at the end of round seven to close off the neck. Once you have finished all seven rows, again, this is a spot where you can deviate. If you wanna make your neck longer, then keep going. Don't feel like you're stuck following the pattern. Really make it your own, okay? So this is seven rows. I'm going to slip stitch into the first stitch of row eight. I'm gonna grab my scissors. I'm gonna make a long tail. Again, this tail will help sew the neck to the body portion of the llama. Yarn over and pull that through to create that slip knot. Perfect, so your neck should look something like this and we'll put that off to the side. The body portion of your llama is going to use the pip squeak yarn or the pink paint box yarn that we are using for whatever color you are using or whatever yarn you are using for the main body that would have fur. I am going to use a long row marker tail. I'm going to use, I want it to be longer than the length of my body. So I'm going to use about an eight inch long row marker tail. And then I'm going to start my slip knot. If you are choosing to use row markers, then you can have a small tail, that's totally fine. So for the body, we are again working in rounds. So you can either begin with a magic ring or a chain two. I'm using the chain two. So one, two. Round one is going to be six single crochets inside your magic ring or six single crochets inside the very first chain. One, two, three, four, five, six. Put your row marker in that sixth single crochet or yarn over your row marker tail and pull through your loop. Okay, row one is done or round one is done. Okay, for round two, it wants you to increase single crochet in each stitch all the way around. All that means is two single crochets in each stitch all the way around. You will end round two with 12 single crochets. One, two, 11, 12, great, okay, moving your row marker to that 12th stitch or yarn over, pull through. Okay, for round three, you're going to single crochet in the first stitch and then two single crochet in the next stitch. And then repeat that pattern. One, two, one, two, all the way around. You will end round three with 18 single crochets. One, One, two, one, one, two, 17, 18. Great, move your row marker. I'm going to use my row marker tail. For round four, you're gonna single crochet in the first two stitches, one, one, and then increase single crochet. So it's going to go one, one, two one, one, two. Repeat that pattern all the way around. You will end round four with 24 single crochets. One, one, two. One, one, two. 23, 24. Great, move that row marker. For round five, you're gonna single crochet in the first three stitches. One, 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 and then increase. One, two. And then you're gonna repeat that pattern. So one, two, three, and then one, two. One, two, three, one, two. All the way around for round five, you're going to end with 30 single crochets. One, two, three, and then one, two. One, two, three, and one, two. 29, 30, great, move that row marker tail. 
For round six, you're going to single crochet in the first four stitches, one, two, three, four, and then two single crochet in the fifth stitch. And that's going to be your repeating pattern all the way around. You will end round six with 36 single crochets. Here we go. One, two, three, four, and then two single crochets in the fifth stitch. And then one, two, three, four, and then two single crochets in the fifth stitch. 35, 36, great. Move that row marker. For round seven, you're gonna single crochet in the first five stitches and then increase in the sixth stitch. That's gonna be your new repeating pattern. You're gonna end round seven with 42 single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, and then two single crochet in the sixth stitch. One, two, three, four, five, and then two single crochet in the sixth stitch. 41, 42, great, move that row marker. Okay, so that was the end of round seven. For round eight through round 17, you're just putting one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. If you would like to deviate, here's where you would deviate, okay guys? So basically we have finished growing our sphere, growing our circle. It's going to stay about that wide, okay? If you wanna make your body bigger, you will keep expanding until you've reached the size that you desire, okay? For now, we're just going to keep following the pattern and we're going to put one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. I will meet you at the end of round 17 to move on to closing off our sphere. Sound good? You're doing great. Keep up the great work, guys. I will see you very soon. Okay, last stitch of row 17 or round 17. Great, moving row marker tail. We are now on to round 18. So round 18, we start to decrease. If you are using the pip squeak yarn, you can just continue to, so one, two, three, four, five, and then six and seven, you'll decrease together. If you are using the non-textured yarn, we're going to go back to single crochet in the front loop only with a decrease row, just because again, that'll help cover all the holes when we stuff this section with polyfill, okay? So single crochet, front loop only, the first five stitches, one, two, three, four, five, and then decrease six and seven. So this is stitch six, stitch seven, yarn over, pull through both of those. Okay, and repeat. You will end round 18 with 36 single crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, and then stitch six, stitch seven. Yarn over, pull through. Okay, last two. Great, moving row marker. Just ended round 18. For round 19, it says single crochet in each stitch around. So. Let's go ahead and single crochet underneath both loops of each stitch all the way around, okay? Meet you at the very end of round 19. Okay, last stitch of round 19, moving row marker tail. For round 20, it says single crochet in the first four stitches and then decrease single crochet. So that means stitch five and stitch six will be decreased together, okay? Because we're decreasing 
With a non-textured yarn, we're gonna do the single crochet front loop only. If you are using the pipsqueak yarn, just continue on. Single crochet in the first four and then decrease in five, six. So one, two, three, four, and then decrease five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. You will end round 20 with 30 single crochets. One, two, great. Move our row marker. Okay, for round 21, single crochet in the first three stitches and then stitch four and stitch five, we're going to decrease together. Okay, so again, front loop only. One, two, three, and then stitch four, stitch five, together. You will end round 21 with 24 single crochets. One, two, three, four, and five together. Four and five together. Great. Okay, moving row marker. For round 22, we are going to single crochet in the first two stitches, and then we're going to decrease stitch three and stitch four, okay? So again, also front loop only. One, two, and then stitch three and stitch four together. Okay, you're gonna end round 22 with 18 single crochets. Great, guys, we have just finished round 22. At this point, I'm going to start adding my stuffing. Grab your stuffing. Use your row marker or your row marker tail so that way you can remove your crochet hook because the crochet hook just gets in the way. And start adding that polyfill or that stuffing material. Takes a lot more stuffing than you think. Remember, you want to stuff firmly, but you don't want to overstuff and stretch out your stitches. Okay, so I'm gonna stop right there because it's already starting to kind of come out on the top. We're going to do row 23 together. Row 23 is single crochet in the first stitch and then decrease, stitch two and stitch three together. Again, front loop, single crochet. So one, and then one, two. One, and then one, two. Okay, guys, yarning over our row marker tail or moving your row marker. Great, so I still show quite a significant pull here. What you're gonna do last for the body of your work is first see if there's any more stuffing that you wanna to add to the body before you completely close. And then you will decrease every two stitches together to close the hole together, okay? All right, at the very end, yarn over, pull through your last loop or just move your row marker tail. You have just finished the main torso body of your work. How I would close it is I would take my crochet hook and insert it into the crochet stitch right across from the stitch that I have. Yarn over, pull through, and that just closes up whatever hole might have still been there on the body of your work. Okay, we're gonna take our scissors, cut a small tail because we are not sewing this to anything, we're sewing things onto it. So yarn over, pull through, pull tight. Great. Again, my two strings, I'm going to tie a knot to make sure that everything is secure. If you don't have two strings, you just have one and you still have the one tail, but you wanna make sure it's extra secure, I would go through a stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over, pull through that, and it just creates a slip knot. That's it. Grab our crochet hook, insert into any stitch of the body of the work, 
come out right next to where those strings are, or tails, grab it, grab them with the hook and pull them into the work. Perfect. Roll it, mold it. Isn't that cool? Very neat. Okay, the body is done. Let's move on to the legs. The legs you need to make four. We're gonna start with the white or ivory color. This will make the little paw part of our foot. Okay, I, of course, am making my, or using my yarn for my row marker tail. So I'm going to start with about four or five inches before I begin my slip knot. If you are not using a row marker tail, you're just using actual row markers, you can, of course, start with a smaller tail. Okay, your feet or your legs are also worked in rounds. So again, we are either beginning with a magic ring or beginning with the chain two method. I'm gonna chain two, one, two. Row one or round one is six single crochets inside your magic ring or six single crochets inside the first chain. One, two, three, four, five, six. Great, row marker right there. I'm gonna pull through my row marker tail. Round two of your paw or your leg, you're going to single crochet increase in each stitch all the way around. That just means two single crochets inside each stitch all the way around. You will end round two with 12 single crochets. 11, 12, great, move your row marker. I'm going to pull my row marker tail through. Round three, is just one single crochet in the first stitch and two single crochets in the second stitch and then repeat. So one, two, one, two, one, two. You will end round three with 18 single crochets. 17, 18. Yarn over, pull through or move your marker tail. For round four through round 10, you're just putting one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. So that means for round four through round 10, each row will have 18 single crochets. If you would like to count to make sure you're staying on track. Okay, so go ahead and work on this and I will meet you at the end of round 10 to show you what we do next. Great, we've ended, we've just finished row 10. So I'm going to slip stitch into the very first stitch of what would be row 11. So slip stitch. I'm going to grab my scissors. I'm gonna cut a small tail because I don't need a long tail. I'm not sewing this onto anything. We're going to just clean cut off this layer, okay? I'm gonna tie these together and I'm going to shove those on the inside of that foot. Okay, grab my pink yarn. Okay, I'm using the paint box yarn, the very thin, non-textured. I am using my tail for a row marker tail, so I'm going to give myself a tail. But if you are using row markers or do not want to use a row marker tail, you can absolutely put your slip knot towards the beginning with a tiny tail. We're going to attach our secondary color or the pipsqueak yarn, the highly textured yarn. Here we're attaching the pink color. We're gonna find where the knot was made. We're gonna go backwards a stitch. If you are using the pipsqueak highly textured bulky yarn, you're just going to slip stitch normally into that space, slip stitch and chain one and you're gonna pause. You're gonna stop and you're gonna wait for us to catch up, okay? If you're using the paint box non-textured yarn, we are going to now do that whole front loop only single crochet around the entire row 11, just because again, we're trying to separate this being the foot and this being the fur, okay? So front loop only, slip stitch. Slip stitch and chain one. Now we're both in the exact same space. Everybody together, we're going to single crochet in that same space. We're gonna single crochet in the next space. If you're using the non-textured, this is all front loop only. And we're going to single crochet all the way around and stop right at the beginning of row 11 so then I can show you 
how to finish the leg, okay? Okay, we just finished row 11. We're going to put our row marker in that last stitch, or what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just yarn over my row marker tail and pull it through the loop. Okay, for row 12 through row 18, you're just single crocheting in each stitch all the way around. At this point, guys, if you're using the paint box non-textured yarn, we can start doing a regular single crochet underneath both loops. You are not going to end the row with a slip stitch chain one. You're working in continuous rows, so you're just gonna continue to go, go, go all the way to the end of row 18, and that's where I will meet you, okay? You're doing great. Keep up the great work, guys. When you have finished with row 18, we're going to just cut a long tail so we can attach the leg to the body. Go ahead and slip stitch into the very first stitch of the following row, yarn over and pull through, and that just creates a slip knot to close off your yarn. Okay, go ahead and make three more of these because obviously we need a total of four legs for our llama. And then I will meet you to do the very last step, which is just make the little nub of a tail. And that's the last piece that we have to make before we assemble pieces. So exciting, almost done. All right, I will see you soon. Okay, to make the little tail, we're going to use the same either paint box yarn, the non-textured paint box yarn that we've been using for the fur color, or you can use the pip squeak yarn. I'm going to, of course, start with my tail, my mark, row marker tail. Uh, this little tail is worked in rounds again, so we're going to create our slip knot. Again, if you, if you wanna work with your magic ring, make a magic ring, I'm gonna do the chain two method. One, two, for round one, it says six single crochets inside the magic ring, or six single crochets inside the very first chain. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Great, place your row marker in that sixth stitch or I'm going to pull through my row marker tail. Okay, for round two, it says increase single crochet in each stitch around. So we will put two single crochets in each stitch around. We will end row two or round two with 12 single crochets. 11, 12, great. Okay, place your row marker in that 12th stitch or yarn over and pull through your row marker tail. Okay, for round three through round seven, it just says single crochet, one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. Okay, I will meet you at the end of round seven to show you what to do next. Good job, guys, we're almost done. Almost there. Okay, once you've finished row seven or round seven, of your tail. We're going to cut a long tail to sew this onto the body of your llama. Slip stitch into the very first stitch of the next row. Yarn over, pull through, and that is your slip knot to seal the yarn, to secure the yarn. I'm going to tie a knot here. Perfect. Okay guys, all of the pieces are done. We have made all of the pieces. So I'm gonna grab all the pieces real quick. I got my little leggies right there. Got the main body there. Okay, I've got his neck or her neck, whatever you want your stuffy to be. The head, two ears, and tail. Awesome. Okay guys, really this next part is super simple. We're just sewing all the pieces together.